Okay, so we are playing uh, C4. As you see, we are playing against a very strong player. It's almost uh, 2100, so this game is not going to be easy, but we're going to do our best. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Okay, so he's going for the symmetrical line, so C5, I guess he will maybe think Keto is bishop. Uh, for now, let's develop normally. We can also consider uh, d4 in the position. Yeah, so he's, he's going to think Keto the bishop. That's short castle, and yes, we are, we are probably going to play uh, d4, I guess. We can already pre-move everything, and it's not like his knight go, uh, having uh, very strong uh, uh, discoveries, so it's not like this uh, diagonal is really scary. But we need to be careful, of course, because we don't want to lose because of this nonsense. But for now, it's all theoretical. Okay, so basically, <coughs> we develop, uh, we exchange uh, pawns, sorry. He can take the knight. Okay, so he declined the trade. Um, of course, we can play bishop g5 in the position. Now, in case it is going to take, I can take and then play h4 and, and try to go for his bishop. This is also a very nice idea. Um, also, we can try to maybe put a rook on the center on the d-file against his queen okay so this is actually a very nice move going two for one and uh, building some more pressure on the position so first of all let's take the knight of course he must react for that and of course he cannot really take with the queen due to this bishop so he must take with one of those pawns i guess he will take maybe with this pawn in order to drop and defile for his uh, rook so let's wait Okay, so yeah, his idea is probably is to put the rook on um, on the file. Now, <clears throat> as you see, we got the weakness on uh, b2 that we need to consider. Playing uh, b3 is not going to be safe because we can we might blunder uh, everything. So I guess we can play for a uh, queen c2 after bishop to f5. We can play e4 ourselves and everything is protected. And now we can already uh, consider the move uh, b3 and then put the rook on the center. So basically everything is uh, completely okay. And yeah, basically you want to be careful from those lines, but because I know that I'm able to play e4, uh, supported by so many pieces, I'm not, I'm not really in a worry. Okay, so rook to e8. Uh, for now, let's keep with the original plan of b3. Now everything is completely safe and solid. We just need to find a new spot for the rook, uh, maybe exchange knights, and we're going to be completely okay. Now, also a move like uh, <coughs> moving the knight to e4 or e5 for you to, to try to encourage you, for example, to uh, exchange knight and then you can win your rook we need to keep an eye for that yeah okay so basically the idea is to try to uh, put more pressure on the knight and on this rook of course but it's not like we're going to fall for that of course so let's move the rook to the center i guess we will try to maybe attack our bishop and we can all always play for um, h3 Okay, also be mindful not playing the second move because you still need to protect uh, f2. So, <clears throat> as you see now, we are uh, really safe and we still don't have any plan, but uh, we're going to find a plan soon. Okay, maybe try to put pressure on this pawn, for example. Okay, now my question is that um, it's interesting. If in, my, if in this position I will play knight a4 with a tempo on the queen, he cannot protect this bishop from those two squares. So he must move back. After he's going to move back to d8, we can try to even win the bishop playing e, uh, e3. So this is quite interesting. 
okay also with the tempo on the queen so basically you're taking the queen the downside is that you can try to maybe um, attack anyway launch the attack anyway and if you move basically we might find ourselves find ourselves in a worse position but yeah i'm not i'm not really convinced that uh, he's got a solution for all of that because now we got a tempo on the queen we got pressure on the bishop after queen to the d8 we can play e3 and already win the win the bishop uh, if he's going to put to exchange of course we don't want to take an allow so we must decline with the king to h1 and then we're going to build up <coughs> uh, a pressure of our own on the f file okay so of course we're going to decline um, and yeah basically as you see we are going to try to build pressure on his position so it's going to be interesting of course okay so for example also move like uh, e4 with the double attack on his bishop and um, also maybe <coughs> uh, kicking away the knight and playing for a bishop h6 in order to attack from this diagonal is an idea uh, yeah we got some uh, some many interesting lines just need to be careful from any ideas like uh, knight to e3 but basically we are, we are okay for now yeah um so yeah we still want to create an attack we need to find a solution how to do that um yeah let's center the queen yeah but putting the re the king the queen on e4 we might end up with the bishop f5 which is a problem so maybe even uh, queen d3 also very nice in between moves um also maybe <clears throat> um, h3 is a nice idea h3 to kick away the knight and try to uh, win the win the rook downside is that he can try to maybe uh, sacrifice the exchange anyway so yeah i'm not i'm not really sure Okay, so let's play the in-between moves. Let's go uh, c5. We might put a uh, knight in between to try to maybe fork one of those two pieces. And I'm giving, basically I'm giving black uh, the cards back. Uh, let's see um, what, what he's going to do next. Okay, maybe he will try to sacrifice and create an attack. I mean, he got some idea of his own ideas sorry if it's on so of course we still need to be completely careful but feels like we can uh, still be managed to be okay we can also maybe pre-move taking this pawn i guess he will try to maybe sacrifice but i'm not entirely convinced that it's working for white for uh, black sorry Okay, so he moved uh, his bishop to safety, which is interesting. Um, now we can also play knight to b6, put, put in some pressure on the bishop and the rook. Yeah, so I understand. I guess his idea was to play maybe f5 and after bishop e3, I cannot play e4 to block. I guess that was the idea. So we'll see, he's playing uh, quite well of course. I guess we can maybe even try to sacrifice the exchange and uh, get get an attempt on the on his knight. Uh, put in the second rook on the f-file and maybe go for the mate. If he will try to defend I can put the bishop in between so... Yeah, I will probably sacrifice the exchange after. Oh, and... Basically, yeah, unfortunately, bishop f4 isn't going to work because of um, 
because his bishop is here so yeah um, and I don't of course I don't really want to take because he can take with the knight with the complete fork on my position so yeah unfortunately okay yeah so we are in a rough position of course are not in a good in a good position. Mm. Okay, so I think I've got something a bit crazy, but let's try to sacrifice a rook, and you will see why. Because basically, you want to make him uh, take in the rook, give a second check with the rook, and then give a check and try to win a piece back. So let's see if it's going to work or not but it's it might be quite interesting you might even decline it okay and he doesn't have a lot of time okay so i decided <clears throat> to avoid avoid the the rook sacrifice and just take uh, my bishop now i will try maybe put the second rook on the position and go for the mate so let's see let's see how it goes got a very interesting position also a uh, queen c4 yeah but this this move is not really going to work because we, we can win a tempo on the knight um, and if you want, for example, to um, to decline uh, the checkmate, a move, for example, like bishop f6, and he's going to remove guard on uh, on his knight. If he's going to push the pawn, um, he's going to lose his queen. So yeah, I guess he can try maybe then play for a knight f5 just to blockade everything, and then we can also play e4 ourselves. So. I'm not. I'm not really sure what's going to happen next. I'm not sure. I, I played it. Uh, okay, as well as him, but yeah. Now, as you see, he, he found a very nice mo uh, move to <coughs> secure the mate. Of course, it's still not over. Um, it's still not over, of course. Now, what about maybe, maybe we can even sacrifice, he can take, I can give a check, he can move here, mm. I'm sure there is something in the position, but I can't really find it, unfortunately. Okay, anyway, we do need to move the rook because uh, we are under attack. Okay, so let's let's develop the second rook with the tempo on the knight. And again, we still need to find a solution for uh, for this uh, checkmate spot. Something isn't really working completely. If he's going to take the bishop, I'm going to take with the king. We're still up on the clock, but basically he's got a better position, of course. He's up the exchange. Um, yeah, also bishop a4 with with a tempo. Yeah, um, okay, so let's develop queen c4. We're going to have um, a nice attack, and you lose the queen. As I mentioned, if he's going to move his pawn, he's going to lose the queen. So, yeah. Not, not, a, simple, uh, not a simple position, of course. Yeah, so I guess this is just GG we played. It was a really hard match. It wasn't uh, really easy or anything, but uh, yeah, very, very nice idea. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so that was a fair match. Let's just see if this game was accurate or not. 
Yeah, basically I played like 1800, so I could do much better, of course. I see many mistakes, but yeah, it it was uh, still a very fun match against a good and high-rated player. So hope you enjoy, guys. See you next time.